The following bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Bama Flyweight Division. Introducing first, the man standing to my left and fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet five inches tall and weighed in at an even 126 pounds. He is a mixed martial artist and steps inside the cage with a record of five victories, opposite five defeats, fighting out of Bournemouth, England, G.I. Joe Lawrence. His opponent stands across the cage to my right and fights out of the blue corner. He stands five feet six inches tall. His official weight, 125 and one half pounds. He is a Muay Thai kickboxing specialist with a record flawless at four and do. Oh, fighting out of Nottingham, England, Mahmoud Persian Pride, Beshurati. Your referee, Trevor Mitchell. Here we go, G.I. Joe Lawrence, of course, in the camouflage shorts, my mood is in the black trunks. You know what stands out to me here, Frank, is the age, 35 and 28. I mean, I started slowing down about 36, 38, somewhere around there. Be interesting to see if a 35-year-old can uh, whip on a 28-year-older here. Mahmoud seems to have the action. He's very, very long with his kicks, like we said in the intro. Like, you got to look at look at how long and staying low. He's obviously want, not, not wanting to get taken down in this position. Mahmoud's got a great long-reaching jab in this spot, but Joe Lawrence is so aggressive and understands how to get inside when he needs to. You watch the footwork, uh, you know, with the Musharad. He, he's keeping that distance. He's moving his feet whenever um, Lawrence comes in. He's able to keep that spacing until he wants to come in and strike, and then he closes distance and strikes. So I think that uh, Basharat's uh, doing a good job. I think Lawrence is really has to move more angles, use side-to-side -side movement, and then close in just trying to get him his fence and uh, take him down. Basharat has made Lawrence miss about four leg kicks, five leg kicks, and five or six punches, completely whiffed just because of his position change, just because of his angle and knowing exactly where to go. And then I think he's only missed one or two of each. Well, you, you think, the thing is, Frank, is that you know, I'm screaming in the corner right now, like, do not stay on your feet with this guy. He is a proven champion in striking. F close your distance, use some angle, but don't be exchanging punches with this guy. Let's so, get, get but, your ego out of the way for sure. Basharate, yeah. if you let your ego get in the way, he's going to win this stand-up battle. He's got the better foot motion, the better, the, obviously right now he has the better defense. He hasn't been touched but one or two times. Yeah, he needs to, he, and, and it's okay to go ahead and strike, but if you're going to do that, then you need to set it up with a takedown or a clinch or at least close some distance. Right now, Basharate, he's, he's controlling the stand-up. Nice catch. There it is. He's on the ground. Good position change. Oh, nice submission position. Let's see what he does with the Basharat. They're looking for a knee bar. Come on, bottom side triangle lock. It's loose, though. You can see there's space on the top of the knee for his head to pop out. Good position change. What can Bash, can he get to a knee bar from here? Looks like he's trying to dig it out. He needs to dig the heel, though, a little bit more. He, he, he actually if he can squeeze that pretty tight right there. He can uh, have a hard time breathe. But right now, Lawrence really has to take advantage of this because he. I don't know if he'll get another chance. Basharat did a good job of changing positions, getting all the way off that heel. So he's still trying to dig it out, and he's just turn himself into it and start pulling that leg out if he wants the knee bar. Yeah, but he's got a pretty good triangle right there. It's a reverse triangle. And, and if he can stay there and really clinch down on it, he's going to make Lawrence make a mistake trying to get out. Because it, it, it does create some pressure there, and it does make him uncomfortable. So He's starting to slide off a little bit. You can see the, the shoulder starting to peek out a little bit there in the backside. So right Basharat is losing his grip. You see the arm come down. Now, right now, Basharat could actually do a hammer lock if he would reach down and grab that wrist. Right there. He, good move right there. Good let go stand up. Sitting up to a single leg. Good position change. Steps in. Nice work by Basharat. I mean, I'm very impressed with his wrestling ability, his wrestling skill. He turned himself around the corner, got himself up. You know, with just under two minutes left in this first round, we've seen a lot of action by both these guys, and Basharate controlling all positions right now. Yeah, I, I, if I'm Basharate, I let go. I, I, I back up because he was doing so well on the stand up that uh, there's no reason why he should waste this much energy trying to clinch and take this, take Joe Lawrence down. He should just, you know, push away, step back, and go to what he was doing well at. I mean, uh, a couple times he uh, he missed uh, by, by inches from uh, really landing a good, clean shot. So 
Um, it's just, it's a risk he's going to take, I guess. But uh, if I was screaming in his corner, I'd be saying, separation, uh, let's work those strikes, because that's where we had success. Joe Lawrence right now being pushed against the cage by Basharate. He's controlling this base. He's controlled it from the, from the get-go, pretty much, with his foot speed. And now he's in a wrestling position. Instead of stepping out like Ken thinks he should, he should step out and go back to striking position, but he's not as content right now to stay right here against the cage. You know, and, and, and maybe it's, uh, maybe, he, you know, he's, uh, he's worked on his submission skills and all that, but, uh, you know, I look at what he's already done. I look at what, how dominating he was in the stand-up, and so that's where I would say, you know, you know, to go back to because you were having success with it, and why change it? Plus, that's your wheelhouse. If you're a K-1 flyweight champ, <laughs> that's what you do the best. Find every position that gets you back to what you do the best, which is punching and kicking guys. So wherever they are, top, bottom, on the ground, standing up, you got to figure out where to get there. And right now, Basharate is doing an incredible job of holding Joe Lawrence against the cage, pressuring him, winning the judges on the judges' scorecards. But if he wants to finish this fight, I agree with you, Ken. I think he should step back and go ahead and swing and start swinging for his head again. Yeah, short time left, and uh, you know, I guess we'll see what he comes out when he does a second round. Clearly, Basharate wins this round, but unfortunately, he, I think I believe he could have put himself in a better position to finish if he had gone ahead and tried to strike once he got back to the feet. Joe Lawrence now in the corner. What do you think Joe has to do to get ready to come back out and try to win uh, the second round? First of all, he can't. You, you don't strike with the striker at this caliber. I, I mean, he may land a good shot and knock him down, but the odds are not in his favor. So, you know, it is what he's worked on. I promise you that they've been working on takedowns, working on clinch, working on closing distance, because, uh, you know, obviously, Basharate's record stands for itself. He's a striker. So you know they worked on it. So why isn't that game plan being implemented? Basharate getting some instructions from his corner. Joe Lawrence getting instructions from his corner. Both men have got a lot of work in front of them. Both guys very, very game. Give the slight edge to Basharate in that first round, but Joe Lawrence is no worse for the wear, no blood, no cuts. Let's see what happens at the start of the second. And it's on, beginning of the second round here, Joe Lawrence in the camouflage, Basharate in the black shorts. This is where I think Basharate's really, unless Joe Lawrence does something different, he's already timed him, he's got his timing after that first round. And uh, this is where I think he's going to land some pretty decent shots. Uh, unless Joe Lawrence changes something, because his movement's the same over and over, where Basharate's moving all over the place, changing angles, getting Joe Lawrence to, to, to faint and step the way he wants to step. We're starting to see Joe Lawrence fake, reaching for the leg, but he's dropping his hands when he does it. And it's, it's Basharate's eyes lit up. He's getting ready to start looking for some head kicks, I believe, here. Because he knows that Joe Lawrence is, wow, great duck underneath. And now stepping in for a takedown himself. Basharate, was not, I was not expecting that from him. Yeah. I thought for sure he'd take a half step back out, circle around, and start striking again. Instead, he goes, content to go back in for the clinch. Well, you know, it's easy for us to sit down and, 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 and uh, make statements in that, because, you know, we've both been there. And it's easy to sit here and do that. But from what I'm seeing, I'm not sure what, it, it, why you would take yourself out of, like you said, your wheelhouse and put yourself into a situation where you use more energy and, 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 and put yourself in a difficult situation. I mean, he was having success. so. Why, why are you going to clinch again? But again, like I said, we're out here, they're in there, um, and we'll see what happens. I'm wondering if Joe Lawrence did a particular technique or might have hit Basharate, something we didn't see, or was doing something that Basharate knew was gonna sting him, was gonna hurt him on the inside. Having that much experience in striking, he might have figured it out a lot quicker than we are sitting here from the commentary position and decided to step inside and drive him back against the cage again. That's true, you know, because like I said, we're not in there and we don't understand what they're thinking. But even right here with uh, with Basharate's uh, experience, um, there's a lot more knees should be thrown in on the thighs and the body, especially with um, the Muay Thai experience that he has. He can really light him up here into this fence, especially to the body. Joe Lawrence needs to get himself spun off the cage, get himself in a better position to start winning this fight. He obviously won the lost the first round. If he wants to win this second round and get himself in a position to win the fight, he's got to get away from this aggressive behavior by Sharati. He needs to turn himself off and get himself back on top when it hits the ground. It's nice to see, um, you know, the well-roundedness of the fighters today because, you know, as Basharate is a, a, a striker, boy, you can really see the improvement on his grappling skills, especially the stand-up grappling skills, by being able to push Joe Lawrence into the fence and be able to control him like he is. Oh, right below, both hands are locked up. Looking for a tough double leg right now. Basharate's in a good position to finish. Oh, he let Joe Lawrence slide his butt down below the grip and get himself back up on top of the cage. 
Basharati could have finished that double-A takedown right there and put himself on top, but didn't go quick enough to the finish. And he started out in a good position where he had his arms around the back of his knees and was able to take him down, but then Joe Lawrence dropped his hips down. He doubled under it, pulled his arms up, and uh, was able to keep him from taking him down. So it was a really good job by Joe Lawrence. Masterful position by Joe Lawrence. Great, great work, technically wise, but I still would like to see him get off the cage. Ken, is he just not maneuvering, or, or is Basharati doing a good job of holding him, holding the position? Because it looks like to me that Joe is trying to get off the cage. He's trying to spin himself off, but he's just not getting the space for Basharate. Yeah, what, what it looks like to me is Basharate is just not really working that hard to try and finish the fight. It's almost like he's just trying to win rounds because by pushing him up in the fence and really not really doing anything effective other than land a few punches here and there and that control Joe Lawrence against the fence, which is winning in the round, but but I just don't see him trying to close the fight right now. And I don't know if that's because he's getting gassed or, or getting tired or doesn't believe in his skills, but Basharate's not really doing a whole lot to finish the fight. But again, like I said, he is winning the round. With a minute 20 left in this first round, or excuse me, in the second round, I really believe that both guys could actually win this fight or win this round. Either guy can go ahead and take it over if they choose to. But they've got to figure out which one has to be more aggressive and get in a better striking position because it's anyone's guess. Look at this. Right now with a minute left. Joe Lawrence's hands are down. It's like, you see how he's dropping his hands? That's not really a good spot for him to be in. He needs to keep those hands up with a striker like this and a kick. And a kick. Get those hands up because when he steps in, his hands have got to come up. Basharate doing a good job of getting out of the way of Joe Lawrence's punches right now. But they are coming from his hip. Big overhand left. Completely misses. Basharate is a good six years out and comes back in with a nice right inside kick. Basharate is just baiting him. I, I, I don't, he's not really using a whole, whole lot of aggressiveness here. I think he's just being content on winning rounds. And if Joe Lawrence makes a mistake, then he'll take advantage of it. But I guess that's, that's his plan. He's not attacking. It's, he's letting Joe Lawrence do the attacking and countering him. He's catching him every time he decides, either with a punch or a kick, and sometimes both. But nothing but landing definitively to make Joe kind of step back and stay out of the way. He's waiting for him. Basharate's waiting for him. I, look, I see it in his eyes. He's just kind of being patient. He's waiting. But you, how long do you wait before you land a shot? Sometimes you've got to step up and, and throw a four or five punch combination. Well, there we have it. I think that uh, Basharate has won both these rounds so far. He's up at least on my scorecard, 20 to 18. What do you think, Ken, so yeah, far? Yeah, I, I do. And I, I think Basharate's basically, um, you know, he's winning the round um, and pushing him against the fence, uh, doing strikes here and there. but. As a coach, I'm telling him, listen, uh, you know, if we're going to get that big fight or, or move up the chain fast, we got to we gotta finish fights. We can't just win rounds. And I, that's what I'd be telling the corner is, like, you let your hands go, let those, those, those awesome leg kicks and head kicks go, and let's finish this fight. And I think in uh, Joe Lawrence's case, um, and he's got to find a way when he's, especially if he gets pinned up against the fence by Basharate, he's got to use those skills that he's developed over the years to be able to get him to the ground and at least have some success. Both guys are off the stools, getting ready for the beginning of the third round. Should have missed get ready for the start of the bell. And here we go, good step in. Circling again. There's a thing of being aggressive and then being over-aggressive. Joe Lawrence needs to be careful here, not walk straight in like this he's doing. is being kind of being aggressive and trying to do something. He threw six punches, not one yeah. landed on that one, but he did get inside. He is driving in. Now let's see if we can get the takedown. If we can get Basharati on the bottom, let's see what happens if he gets on top. Uh, this is what he needed to do. He had to clinch. I'm not sure that that was the best way to do it, but he is where he is at right now. He, he rushed in, he got him against the fence. Now he has to do something with it in order to have some success and be able to win this fight. He's gonna have to be able to put him on the mat and be able to go for some submissions. You would think his corner told Joe Lawrence, you've lost those last two rounds, even though they're very, very slightly. We're not sure, but to be safe, you lost those two rounds. Let's look for a finish now in the third round. Let's get aggressive. It looks like that's what happens. He's being aggressive. He's now trying to get for the takedown, but he's expending a lot of energy here he needs to get Basharati down on his back and see if he can't finish it from there. I think he knows he lost the last two rounds. I think it's in his head already, and I think it's by his corner telling him that. Obviously, he knows he has to come out and do something. But um, at the same time, too, when you know that, you don't want to just kind of go in blindly and just rush straight in. You also have to have some technique. Um, so even if they get a break right here, he's going to have to be careful that he doesn't just, uh, you know, be over-aggressive because he lost the first two rounds, and he just comes in 
uh, straight ahead without using any angles or, or side movement because that's when you're going to get caught. Trying to work from footstops now by Joe Lawrence. Nice spin. Wow, great job by Basharat to go ahead and switch Joe Lawrence onto the cage now, switch the positions. He's in there on the single. Let's see if he can finish. He's, I, you know, I think he's just going to stay right here and, and uh, land shots here and there, throw some knees, throw some punches, and uh, win the round. But like I said, man, I, I, as good as he is at striking, I, I, I would, I would, I want to create some space here and and, um, and then let his hands go and his kicks go and see if we can't finish this fight. And hey, listen, you know, in the world of MMA, there's so many people that are going to make it, and there's so many that aren't, and there's very, very few that are going to get to that next level. And the only way you get to that next level is by finishing fights. You have to go out and finish fights and not be satisfied with the win by a decision. And I agree. I think there's, there's several times you see world championship fights even uh, for MMA that could have been finished if one of the guys was a lot more aggressive and wasn't trying to just not lose his belt or just out there, I'm fighting to win, you know, trying not to lose as a go out there trying to finish a fighter. Yep. And I think that uh, they'd be better served if they'd be a little bit more aggressive. And both these guys right now have finishing power, both submission and striking, but neither one is looking for that finishing game right now. Basarate, if he would go high with a kick, he'd probably land it right now if it, with his rear leg. If he'd go high because he's leaning down trying to block that leg kick. If he throw a head kick right now, he, uh, he would land it. He's looking for it. There it is. Good position, caught him in the rim, or excuse me, caught him in the armpit. Millie comes back down for an inside leg kick again and lands that. Uh, he's thinking, he's thinking about it. Joey Lawrence is being a lot more aggressive. Joe was trying to step on the inside, trying to get some strike again, but he's missing every single time he steps in, just a little bit too far out. Basharati doing a great job of stepping back and getting out of punch position, but getting back inside for leg position and getting his kicks off whenever he needs to. See, and I don't understand. See, Basarate, whenever Joe Lawrence throws punches, right, he's dropping his hands. Lawrence is dropping his hand. And why Basarate hasn't seen that and be able to counter with a head kick or a punch? Uh, he needs to be able to see that, because every time Joe Lawrence comes in and throws a punch combination, he drops his hands, but he doesn't back up. He doesn't get out of range. See, right there, his hands go down. He countered with a head kick or a punch. A half step out, a half step back in. See, hands go down. Every time he throws a punch come, Basharat, they should be looking at that right now. With just under a minute left here in the third round, this is the final round of this fight. I have Basharat up two rounds and none. Joe Lawrence oh, has to know that kick. as well. He's going to be looking for a finish, but Basharat is in a prime position as well to finish this fight if he chooses to on his feet. Basharat doesn't look like uh, he, <laughs> he wants to scrap. He's uh, going to be content with the decision. He's stepping outside, he's backing away, he's turning the corner, he did a good job of shifting position. He knows he's winning the fight, Frank. And, he's, and now he's on his bike, he's coasting a little bit. And this is what I don't like to see in mixed martial arts. So guys, I know I'm winning the fight, let me coast off, especially guys that have, and haven't shown it yet, that one punch knockout power, the one punch striking, the combo power that he has in his hands to finish the fight, he hasn't shown us yet at all. Any time in these 15 minutes, and I think if he at least showed it to us and said, oh, I can't finish this guy, now let me coast. He never showed that to us, and now we coast at the end of the third round to go ahead and win it by decision. At this level, you got to finish, man. We have to see more finishes, and both these guys are excellent flyweights, 125 pound division. I think either one of them could have finished if they chose to, but they need better coaching on how to get to that finish. Basharat just need to step back a little bit and go ahead and try and get the finish a lot sooner. I think he could have finished off in the second round. I think Joey Lawrence could have easily put himself to win this fight, put himself in a good position sometime in the second. After he realized, hey, I can't get him down to the ground, let me take a half step out. So a couple inside elbows, a couple inside punches, and change the tide of the fight. Yeah, punch combinations, you know, looking at your opponent's weaknesses, dropping hands, those are things you got to recognize in the fight. And I don't think that Basirat, they recognize that. Yeah, he got the win. Yeah, it was a pretty good win. But I think that he needed to be able to finish this fight. I, I thought he had the ability to.
We go to the judges' scorecards for the final decision. Kevin Capel scores the bout 29-28. Andy Roberts and Nigel Burgess both score this bout 30-27 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Mahmoud Persian Pride Fisher.